and in year 2000 we met and we started working on our business plan to build this wine destination. So when we literally drove in to begin 50th parallel, this is what we had here. So we had this gorgeous Quonset. <laughs> and, and a Quonset yeah. wine, right? Totally. Yeah. We, made our first, we were very grudgy in year our, one. We yeah. were. We made our first vintage in this building. And then um, we, we actually realized... found 50th after like we, we were looking for many years, yeah. like, 10 years of looking up and down the valley, and uh, we found 50th. Uh, Sherry Lee's own fitness businesses, so she had a curves uh, business at one time, and uh, she had a Mini Cooper wrapped in women working out on the side with the phone number on the side, like the big 403 phone number. Right? So we would right? we would drive up and down this valley for years. We would drive to people's vineyards, and like we would I would jump out and like dig a little bit of dirt, and steal dirt, and steal petiole samples and little leaves and all these different things. And one day we're doing this, and, I'm, and uh, we get this phone call, you know, from a 250 number, like a local number. And, On my cell phone. And, and I'm like, yeah, and she's like, well, hello, Curtis, you're being Curtis speaking. And, and she, they're like, are you guys lost down there? <laughs> so, like, there was, the winery is not the down the middle of the, the car, right? So they phone call. the phone number. And I'm like, oh really my funny. goodness, we're not incognito here. Yeah, so we, we, we did a lot of reconnaissance up and down the valley. Um, my guys. As a, as a young wine region, of course, there's been a lot of great things done. There's been a lot of mistakes, obviously. So we went on a, a journey to obviously find the right piece of property to build this project on. But also, you know, we also learned a lot from a lot of different people as well to what we should do right and wrong. So we ended up buying a revenue property across the lake. And when we were when we finished building that, we looked over here and we're like, what is that? This beautiful 61 acre property that was pretty much untouched. There was a small bit of cherries here, about 20 acres of cherry orchard, um, and nothing all around it. So uh, about 40 acres untouched for many years, which is pretty incredible. So, and then we found the Quonset <laughs> when we got so over then, here. Yeah. Fast forward, we purchased the property, and that is how we started 50 for a long. So Curtis and I with shovels. Everyone asks, how did this start? None of this was here. In 2009. And that's when I trademarked uh, a trademark that we called Glamour Farming. Because we farm in our glasses and our sparkly nails and sometimes our heels. <laughs> My nails aren't sparkly. And we make it work. <laughs> the uh, This incredible body of water in front of us is a big part about our place. So. Um, wine is made obviously by place and, and uh, in, the, uh, in the place we have terroir in the soil format but then we also have terroir in what makes this place so special. So, so 50th parallel, if you uh, obviously what do you guys see when you look out there? It's a, it's a gorgeous body of water and it's a, sort of a benched valley obviously here in particular. Um, we're just a little bit past the 50th parallel. We have a little I think 50 degrees in a minute and, and a bit and a few seconds. <laughs> so uh, we're 50 in a bit. Um, but uh, the biggest thing about this location, there's two things that's got going for it obviously. One is this reflectivity that we've got from the lake. Uh, we focus on Pinot Noir, we decided to focus on Pinot Noir because Pinot is one of these varieties that actually ripen primarily by light, not by heat. It loves light. Um, that kind of uh, quite coincidentally um, with Pinot, it also is burned very easily. <laughs> so it actually um, can be sunburned at the peak of a desert sun you know, day like today. So um, the way that our vineyards have been planted, uh, when you kind of, when we go up behind the building, you see the angle of the vineyards. All the Pinot has been planted sort of at 30 degrees to the southwest sort of thing. So it's sort of in that true southwest angle. So that at the hottest part of the day, we have our, our Pinot Noir in the shade, so it's not going to sunburn. And in the afternoon, we're going to have a little bit more intense light. In the morning, we have a longer exposure to the less intense light. So, um, so very unique place because we get almost 17 hours of daylight, you know, in the Okanagan Valley at Solstice. So it's pretty unique. So we're compromised, obviously, with the shorter growing season, but we have longer days, which gives us the the length of season, which um, is quite unique. And here, because we're so close to the lake, the, the lake retains a ton of energy. So we have a lot of heat that obviously comes off the lake in the winter time. So it allows the vines to survive. So I would have never purchased a property too, too far away from the lake because that on, we will still have cold winters here. Uh, we had a fairly cold one this year and uh, we experienced almost no damage to our vines. Our primary varieties, of course, Pinot Noir is almost 40% of our program. It's our only red grape. It's our focus red grape that we produce wine from. And then we make uh, Pinot Gris, so it's sort of a, a mutant clone of Pinot Noir. So that uh, is a sort of a close second to, to the Pinot Noir. Chardonnay, Riesling, and um, we also make a beautiful Gilbert Streminer. And then uh, a Pinot Noir Rosé, of course, is uh, <laughs> a gorgeous part of the portfolio. So we do two different sizes of red fermentation. Uh, we have small one-ton fermentation that allows us to keep vineyard blocks and clones uh, separate during fermentation. So small, small fermentation vessels, and we <clears throat> slide them to the floor. <laughs> uh, it's made 100% Pinot Noir, our rosé. Um, we put it through our pressure destemmer. Uh, we destem it, we crush it, 
um, and it, it's going into this tank here. Uh, we fill this tank. Uh, we have excellent cooling on these tanks, so we hold the crushed fruit cold for 48 hours to extract color. We get a bit of texture in there as well with those broken skins. Um, and then we press off that cold juice off the skins and then the juice goes to a white wine tank and it's fermented just as the other white wines are fermented. So everything is whole bunch. Um, that's a, a gentle press extraction, gives us very clean fruit, very little um, <clears throat> sediment to, to settle out. When you're doing it whole bunch, it doesn't, it's very gentle, so the berries aren't getting beat up. You're not destemming, you're not crushing, everything is intact, there's little oxidation. So it goes into the press, whole bunch, gentle extraction, very clean juice, leads to clean fermentation, helps us maintain our fresh fruit aromatics. Um, which is what we go for in our white wines. Mm -hmm. This is like your vintage. It, it would be, a, it's a barrel selection is all it is really. So so what we decide if we have a lot of cool components to work with every year in the vineyard obviously, like 20, 2014 was a really great year, 2015 really great year. Um, if we have those components to work with, we'll do this, basically go through taste those 200 barrels every year and we think we can have something that is truly unique and special. You're welcome wine, that was a 2015 Pinot Gris. I tell people I'm related to Pinot Gris because it's always in my bloodstream. That's my line. <laughs> I happen to prefer Pinot Gris and it's lovely that it's related to Pinot Noir. And you just actually finished our 2016 Riesling. So we're trying to, you know, give you a few more. We're now going to pour you our 2016 Pinot Gris. 2016, 2016 you know, Pinot Gris. Okay. The whole goal behind wine, besides the fact that we're making sure that we're, you know, making estate quality products, uh, is to bring people together and create an experience. Correct. 